In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a more stable and possibly faster Windows PC when it comes to recording, mixing, and mastering audio. As you may or may not know, computers, whether they be Mac or PC, Windows, they are not designed for just audio, for just music creation. Well, that's a problem because it can get in the way of latency issues, uh, clicks and pops with your audio. There are all kinds of problems that you can run into if you do not optimize your computer for recording, mixing, or mastering. This video is specifically for Windows 7 users. So for if you're on a Windows 10 or Windows 8 machine, I will have links in the video description. But for now, to me, Windows 7 is the best, and I'll get to why right now. I want you guys to follow along. Don't just watch this video. So while I'm explaining things, you know, pause it and do your thing because otherwise you're going to have to rewatch the video and that would be lame, right? So first of all, step one, use Windows 7 64-bit along with Kako's Reaper. I can't tell you enough how much better it is using this over Windows 10 probably even Windows 8, and Reaper is just probably the least resource-heavy doll out there. And while it may not be the household name that Avid Pro Tools is, it also is a lot more stable, it can do a lot more, and just overall, to me, the experience working with Reaper is better, and it's a shame that it's not the industry standard just because it didn't come out in 1990 or 1989, whatever that was. The second step is to use a desktop computer. Now, I know a lot of you guys, you want to record mobile, or maybe you only have a laptop. Hey, that's okay, but the truth is, it is a lot more stable to record and mix on a desktop computer for obvious reasons. Next, consider updating all of your hardware drivers along with your motherboard BIOS. The BIOS is something that I actually was not that familiar with updating and I didn't understand the importance of updating it. But absolutely, I would say BIOS overall is the most important, we'll call it driver, to install because it affects everything else down the line. Now, I wouldn't be anal retentive and update the BIOS every single month or whenever updates drop, but basically keep it updated every six months to a year, and you'll be good to go. All right, so now we're going to get to some tweaking. And this is disabling services, disabling programs you may or may not need. So in no particular order, I'm going to go through these tweaks to help you out. You want to click the Start menu, right-click on Computer, and then Manage. Next, click on Services and Applications and then choose services, double click it. So this is where your machine is gonna be specific to what you have installed and what your needs are. But in general, I can recommend a few things. First of all, Windows Defender should be disabled because it's antivirus stuff that just eats up resources. Now, it does leave your computer a little bit less safe, but truth be told, in a professional atmosphere, production computers are unplugged from the internet to avoid virus issues. So you just want to right click on Windows Defender, go to Properties, and then under Startup Type, change it to Disabled. I'll probably be coming back to that, but the next thing I want to do is go to my Power Options. And that will be on our control panel. And actually, here's a cool little thing a lot of people may not know. If you click this right here where it says view, click category, and then you can either do large or small icons. I'm blind, so I choose large. And basically, this saves you a few clicks. Now, you'll have to get used to this if you've never done it before. But this is a little bit of a time saver to have enabled. So under here, you want to go to power options. And then under this menu, I have mine on 
custom high performance. And I'll click this right here where it says change plan settings. And then now I have my monitor to turn off after 15 minutes. That is my screensaver because it saves electricity. So I also can go here where it says change advanced power settings. And then what you want to do is click here on the hard disk and see one of my hard drives is solid state and the other one is normal. Now I would probably recommend actually putting this a little bit higher or completely off. And if you can turn it off by typing in zero, because mine has a problem where it'll go to sleep and then I don't, really want that because then it takes a little bit of time to spin up so that can delay your recording here and there but I would actually for me I like having it around 30 minutes so the other option that you want to change is under USB settings I would recommend that if you're on a desktop that you keep this disabled. Now, obviously your computer will use a little bit more power, but you can avoid some potential issues by doing that. Now I personally haven't run into many issues, so I'm going to leave it enabled for now, but it's up to you. Another option that I have enabled is this processor power management. Now this should change when you when you put this on performance mode. However, if not, it's good to double check it. And I actually have mine on minimum 100%. And my system cooling policy is to put the fans on. And then my maximum obviously is 100%. Now, if you're on a laptop, you might want to just reduce this. If you need to say battery, then just keep these two options the same so that there's no throttling. Now, if you change this to passive, then there will be throttling of the processor. But, uh, yeah, noise should not be an issue. This is another reason why I prefer desktop computers is that with a quiet fan design, the computer doesn't run that loud. So the next thing you want to do is go back to computer. And then you want to right click on one of your hard drives and choose properties. And then down here is an option for indexing. Now there's a debate on whether this is useful or not. I think for a solid state drive, it's really not going to speed it up that much for your older type of hard drives. It may be beneficial. However, it does constantly eat up resources. So, if you want to maximize performance, you should disable this right here. Choose apply and then it'll change. And also on my secondary drive, same thing, disable that. Now, another thing that you may want to try under the tools tab is defragmentation. Now, if you look, I have not defragged my hard drive. You can set it up for a full defragmentation. Obviously you should do that overnight so that it's not messing with you while you're trying to do something on your computer. But remember that it's there. Solid state drives do not need to be defragged from my understanding. Now, if somebody thinks I'm wrong about this, feel free to post in the comments below. All right, next up, hit the start menu again as we've been doing. Right click computer and go down to properties this time. And what you want to do is hit system protection. And basically on this part right where it says protection settings, you want to only have your system drive be on. Everything else should be off. Otherwise, again, it's going to eat up a lot of performance and you don't really need it. It's really just there in case you get a virus, which usually affects your system drive but really you should be doing backups anyway, image backups. So yeah. Next click on the advanced tab and then choose startup and recovery. 
settings over here. And then what you want to do is uncheck this automatically restart because that's bad. You want to be able to see what that blue screen of death says. All right, let's get out of there. Go back to the start menu, go to the control panel. And under here, you want to choose action center. But if you have it on the normal thing, it'll be under system and security. And then you want to click the action center. Actually, it's underneath change user account control settings. And then you want to move this all the way down to never notify because these pop-up notifications come up all the time and it's annoying. And honestly, they don't do much when a real virus wants to do its thing. So you may as well disable it. Next up, go back to the control panel and you want to choose programs and then uninstall program. And then over here it says turn windows features on and off. Now I'm going to have to wait for this to load up, but while it's doing that, I want to tell you that I did do some research on which ones to turn on and off and yours may be different from mine, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep internet explorer 11. My index service is off actually, but for some reason I think it's still working. I don't know why, but yeah, anyway, you can just look at my options. So this, these are the ones I'm going to turn off because they should have been turned off and they weren't. And the first one is media features. Now, if I click this, it should deactivate all four of these. Yep. And then also I'm going to scroll down more under the print and document service. I don't use this. I don't use a network printer. You might. So if you do, then keep that on. And I do not have a scanner right now or a fax machine. So maybe I should keep this on because I might forget that. You know what? I'm just going to turn it off for now because I might not get a scanner until the end of the year. So <laughs> I'll turn that off for now. And then you do want to keep this on, the remote differential compression. I never use my computer as a touch screen, so that's getting disabled. And I rarely use Telnet. When I need to, I'll probably be told by somebody on tech support to enable it. So I'll click that off. And Windows Gadget Platform. Now this is that stuff when you first install an operating system from a store-bought computer. Typically you have like a bunch of crap up here, a bunch of crap over here. Well, you, if you don't use that stuff, which I don't, you can disable this. And then finally down here, Windows Search, I will indeed keep it because I don't want to get rid of this. I use this all the time. But these two down here, XPS Service and Viewer. What the heck is that? Well, Windows tried to compete with Adobe to overtake the PDF format and failed miserably. So if you don't ever use XPS files, you can just click this and disable both of them. So I'm going to hit OK, and I probably need to restart my computer when this is all said and done. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop capturing right now. All right, next up, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Now, this isn't exactly necessary. However, I recommend it, and I recommend you do it on a monthly basis or basically anytime you back up your computer, you want to delete the stuff out of this folder. Now, again, I don't take responsibility for you messing your computer up. But I will say this, what the heck is this big seven gigabyte file in my temporary folder? I'll tell you what this is. This is Logitech constantly writing a file and destroying my SSD, which to be honest with you, they've known about this issue for seven years now and they never fixed it. And to me, that is rife for a lawsuit. So what I'm going to do is actually this time around, I will delete this file. I'm going to try to remember it though. So I'm going to copy and paste this name into my to-do list and I'll be right back. Okay. So what I'm going to do after I delete this the first time, I'm going to right click this, go to properties and change it to read only. I'm only going to do that once this is redone because see right now it's seven point whatever gigabytes. Well, I only have 500 gigabytes 
on my SSD. And actually, in reality, it's more like 440. So realistically, a 7 gigabyte file is ridiculously large. So what I'm going to do is control A to select all and then press delete and cross my fingers that I don't screw anything up. <laughs> so this folder was taking up a good, what is that, 28 gigabytes? It's growing, 28.1. I don't know how long it's going to take to delete all these, but once they're all gone, well, once they're in the recycling bin, I'll have to empty it out, and maybe I'll restart the computer then, and, and then I can make the, this a read-only file. But regardless, look at all this space being wasted. A again, I have limited resources on my system drive and any gigabyte I can save helps a lot. And what you want to do when this is all done is click just the local folder and right click temp and then choose create shortcut. And then you want to drag and drop this to your desktop so that you remember you can double click that during your monthly maintenance and everything will be all right. So I'll be back after this thing does its thing. All right, now that I've freed up a whopping 30 gigabytes plus of data just from deleting stuff from the temporary folder, let's get back into some performance enhancements and I'm gonna go change the appearance of Windows, although I am happy with it. There are some things you can do to enhance the performance a little bit. All right, so you wanna hit the start menu again and right click on computer, go to properties, and then click advanced system settings. And then under the advanced tab, click settings where it says performance, and then visual effects tab. And what you wanna do is hit custom, and then I would recommend the following be disabled. Just watch what I'm doing. All right, and that's about it. All right, back to control panel. Click under system and security, and then under the system area, choose device manager. Now here's where the fun starts. Go to your disk drives, and then right click each one, go to properties, and then click the policies tab. Now, the second option is very debatable. I personally like to have it off, but you might have better performance if this is on. So if you have an unlimited power supply, battery backup, then go ahead and click this because you'll be all right for the most part in case there's a brownout or lightning strike or whatever, you'll be all right. But right now I don't have a battery backup, so I'm keeping it disabled. And then do the same thing on your other hard drive if you have one. And if you have an external drive, I don't have one plugged in right now, but if you did have one under the policies tab, choose better performance. You just have to remember, obviously, to click the safely remove option before you power it down. All right, so close out of these for now, and you want to go back to your start menu, and hopefully you'll, you have the ability to run programs. If not, just start typing this in anyway, M-S-C-O-N-F-I-G, M-S-Config, click that, and then we have a bunch of cool options. So let's go through these. Mine look fine on this, so boot, that looks good. Services, this is too complicated for me to get into right now, but I might come back to this later. Startup, this is what I want to talk about. So these are all my current programs that start up anytime Windows starts. And a lot of times I will just straight up disable them anyway. So it's annoying for me. And I'm going to go through this list and disable these SOBs for the hopefully final time. Back under the control panel, system security and system. We're going to go to advanced system settings. And then under performance settings, click the advanced tab. And then you want to change, if it's not on here already, 
adjust for best performance of background services. Now let's go back to the main control panel and I'm going to choose hardware and sound. And then click sound again. So here are all of my audio hardware devices. And what you want to do is click one of them and choose properties. Go to the advanced tab. And then what you want to do is uncheck both of these right here. And then choose apply. Now here's what's the bad part. You need to do this for every single audio device that you have. So I'm going to do mine. And when I'm done, I'll come back. So you also need to do this under the recording tab as well. Again, for every single device. All right, so next is something that I actually cannot show you um, because you can't do screen captures in the BIOS, but this one comes from Sweetwater's website. And I don't even know if I have this, but you might. And that is, go into your BIOS and look for something called Intel Speed Step EIST or AMD Cool and Quiet and disable that. Another obvious thing you want to do, now I don't have any of these programs, but you know, you can use your imagination. If you're using antivirus software, whenever you record or mix or master, you should probably disable that software, especially during recording, because clicks and pops are lame. All right, now sorry if my audio is a little bit different right now. I needed to change where the microphone is because I'm gonna need to lean into the computer to see my next thing here. And um, so as you saw, I just hit start and then I search for services and yeah, here we go. So basically the way this works is the startup type is, well, I'll right click on something and show you. It's either automatic, automatic delayed, Disabled or manual. Now, obviously, disable means you can't run it at all. Manual is the safe bet, which it keeps it flipped off until a program needs the service. And automatic, I believe, starts it up. And that's where we want to run into RAM and performance issues. Adaptive brightness. I did not use that, so I'm going to disable it. Well, here's the problem with this as well is that this is all dependent on what software you have. So what I'm going to do is go through a list that PC World provided me that I should disable. All right. So first of all, I have to go find tablet PC input service. The next one is Windows error reporting. Now you'll still get errors, but they just won't be sent to Microsoft. Offline files is the next one you want to find. So first I'm going to stop it and then I'm going to disable it. All right, so instead of going through the rest of these, I'm going to do this on my own at some point, but I will link to you a website called blackviper.com, and this guy made a list of tweaks that you should probably use, ones I'm going to use personally, and you can do that on your own time.